What's up everybody? Today's video is showing you how we built this DIY four poster canopy bed. This is a perfect project if you have a big open bedroom that you want to fill with a large statement piece of furniture. I am well rested on this beautiful bed, so let's show you how to build it so you can make one of your own. All right, so we started the building process by gluing together a lot of boards. So you could technically make this project with two by lumber, but we decided we wanted to use hardwoods and use them with what was available at the home improvement store. So these were one by boards, which are three quarters inch thick. So we started with the posts. To do that, we used three one by four boards, spread a lot of glue on each side and glued three boards together to make the posts. We clamped them together with a lot of clamps never actually run out of clamps before on a project and this was the first time. As they say, you can never have enough clamps. We glued together all four of the posters for the bed and then once they were dry, we decided to add a little taper to the legs. We marked off an inch on the bottom on two different sides and tapered that up on the side. This just gives it a little bit of extra character in the leg and you'll see what I mean when it finishes. After the tapers were done, we ran them through the tabletop router Craig has a great tabletop router that's just really great for DIYers that are trying to add a little bit of extra flair to their projects. This is one thing we've learned, it just makes projects a little bit nicer, takes them over the edge if you do little details like rounding the edges. Today's project is sponsored by Craig Tool. We use all sorts of Craig products when we built this bed. They have all sorts of joinery and cutting solutions, including pocket hole jigs to put everything together, the quick flip, which you're gonna see in a little bit, the router table that we had to round off the edges of this post, all sorts of things. Make sure you check out Craig and all their new products today. All right, so once we were done with those four posters, it was time to work on the side rails and the footboard and headboard pieces. This is what combines all four of the posts together and is the main structure. We did the same tactic with gluing the boards together, except on this one, we only used two boards. Lots of glue, lots of clamps, and then it was time to add the pocket holes. One thing I love about the Craig 720 pocket hole jig is that it works both on its bottom and on its side. So when you have a long post like this, you can lay the 720 down on its side, still clamp it down, and drill your pocket holes from the side. This works really, really well when you're working with long or heavier lumber instead of having to stand it straight upright in the jig. There were lots of pocket holes to drill on all of these headboards. And then it was time to cut down the support beams. So I wasn't too worried about the support beams in the middle being visible. So for this, we did use more rustic two by looking lumber instead of hardwood. These were two by fours that we cut down to be the supports in the middle and then glued and cragged in some legs that will hold up the center supports and support our weight. And once everything was cut and cragged and sanded and glued and everything was ready to go, it was time to stain. This was what took it out to be one of the longer parts of this process. We couldn't decide on exactly what tone of stain we wanted to use for the bed. We were trying to make it look not too brown, not too shiny uh, in our new green bedroom. I want to know what you think at the end. Comment below what you think that color looks like with these green walls, which are bare north woods. All right, so here's what we looked like before in the bedroom. We had this bed left over from our old house. It was time to start building the new one. We started by assembling the headboard. This was two of those four posters. We put that double thick headboard spacer at the bottom and then did single one by four headboards going up to the height that we wanted. So it was gonna be in front of windows. So we didn't want this headboard to be too tall and grand. We wanted it to be fairly low profile, but enough that we could lean on when reading in bed. I know this project, this is where I learned that this is really a two person assembly job. Attaching those side rails was basically impossible to do one handed if you only have one person. So was lifting the headboard and the footboard because those posters were really heavy and you couldn't lift one without it starting to wobble and warp on the other side. This became a whole family affair as you can see. Luke didn't want a nap today so he helped hold up those posters and he was actually genuinely helpful. All right, then we attach the top rails. This is where if you were doing a traditional canopy with a curtain, you would hang those. Just wanna show you one thing here. This is why it's always important to be safe no matter what project you're working on. As you can see, I was standing on a little vanity stool and it wobbled when I leaned forward and I definitely hit my head 
Remember to always work safe, no matter what you're doing and no matter where you're working on it. Luckily, I was able to just step down and it wasn't a big deal, but you never know. We continued to add these railings at the top. These were just two pocket holes on each side. Now it's time for the supports. We used one by fours spanned across all of the support beams on the bed. As you can see, I'm doing lots of little holes on each side of each slat. Well, for that, I'm using the Craig Quick Flip. This is a brand new tool of theirs. This is the first time I really got to use it, and it's really cool. On one side, it's got a little drill bit. You pull the collar and flip it around, and hey look, there's a square driver bit that I can drill in a Craig screw straight through the wood. This was perfect for holding these support slats in place, and I didn't have to use two different drills to do it. So here's how the bed looked before I put the mattress on it. All of these instructions are in the woodworking plans, the link below in the comment section. Looks really cool. I think the color turned out really well, and now you get to enjoy me trying to uh, finagle a giant king size mattress onto a platform by myself for 10 seconds. All right, so here's how it looks. We put on a new duvet cover and we just really love how all these colors came together. That wood color looks perfect on the green walls and the duvet cover really works well with that. This was a really fun project and it's definitely one that can fit a big bedroom and look really grand while also looking modern. Can't wait to update the side tables next to it. You can check those out pretty soon at charlestoncrafted.com. Remember, grab the free woodworking plans for this bed below and see you later.